And they've since banned all QAnon, uh, QAnon YouTubers, right? Like QAnon content. Yeah, they did. Um, Except for your stuff. I mean, I, I don't noticed. think that they should have. Remo- I don't think they should have removed their videos. You know, if they want to demonetize them, so be it. But like, they're basically burning the past. It makes it very difficult for researchers to go back and see what everyone was talking about. You know, I think it's a convenient excuse to some extent for these tech companies to delete all of these accounts and say, "Oh, look, look, we're we're such good stewards now." Um, look, Coca Cola, we did it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so they 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 wipe out um, they wipe out the kind of digital past that sh- that really just shows their culpability in all of this. So really, they they're just getting rid of the evidence of their of of um, of their involvement in 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 bolstering all of this stuff. And instead of instead of ever offering the sol- the real solution, because the real solution undermines their business model which requires to extract our personal data and, and amplify and, and, and feed, based off of, feed us content based off of that personal data. They'll never offer that as a solution. So now instead they're offering censorship and removal of content as a solution. You know, you don't necessarily have to drive people to the most sensational shit. You can just drive, you can just you can have a platform that lets people watch things and it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to, you know, drive them to that kind of content based on their biases, fears, and interests at a, at a you know, accelerated level. So um, you will never hear, I don't think, Google sitting in front of Congress saying, yeah, 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 we should get rid of data, data personalization driven algorithms. I don't think they're going to ever offer that as a solution. You know, censorship to them is is a perfectly viable solution because they have AI um, that they've been working on to to do quote unquote moderation. Um, we know yeah. and we show this in the series how ineffective that moderation actually is, how it actually captures um, accounts and and um, videos that it doesn't that it's not supposed to. Um, it's very easy for people to manipulate that and to get around it. I mean, we saw that. They weren't even able to like stop the Christchurch video from being uploaded millions of times. It only caught it maybe eighty percent. So the AI moderation doesn't even work, but it's being presented as this kind of panacea. Meanwhile, if you're a startup or you're a competing company who's saying, "Okay, well, all these people have been banned off of off of Twitter now. Where are they going to go? Maybe they go to Getter. Maybe they go to Gab. Maybe they go to Telegram." But um, if if laws were put in place or requirements were put in place that you know force these companies to 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 do um, this kind of moderation, well, a startup wouldn't be able to compete. So it's perfectly viable for a big tech company like Twitter or or Google or Facebook to employ AI driven moderation algorithms. It's very difficult for a startup to do that. So it just it allows a big tech company like that to, um, have more control uh, than they do even now uh, because it makes it less likely that competition would be able to rise up in that environment. Why now the reason that they have this big dragnet, right to to pull down all this content that doesn't s- supposedly you know comply with their terms and conditions, the reason they're doing that is threats from advertisers, right? That's the only that's the only incentive they have to do that. Is that am I wrong there? Um, well, there's political incentives, right? Like once you start playing the game of, of arbiter of what's true and what's not true, what's good or bad, um, sure, you can take down some content that, that I think most people would agree they prefer not to have on those platforms, but it also allows them to start taking down things that might be true. You know, if there's something that's unsavory, uh, an unsavory truth about a politician, you know, and and that politician calls them up and says, this is fake news. This isn't true about me. Pull this thing down. Don't let this video go up. Well, there's a obviously quid pro quo that goes on between um, Congress and, and these and, and um, big tech. I mean, they pay the, big tech donates a lot of money to these guys. You know, it used to be cheap money or easy money to take that didn't come with any strings uh, to take big tech money. Um, 
you know, the, the intel agencies also have a lot to benefit from these, from, from the monitoring that goes on on these websites and the kind of data that they're extracting as well. So, uh, okay. there's, there's, yeah, the incentives are, are, are there. <laughs> they're endless. <laughs> Another very scary thing that YouTube does as well, you know, other than doing like takedowns or demonetizations is they do a thing, which I'm sure you're very aware of, a shadow banning content where they make it invisible in search. So you have no idea. You have no, you get no notifications that you've been shut down or that you've been demonetized. They literally don't do anything. They, they just erase it from search. But to you, it looks like you, the creator or the uploader, it looks like it's still there, but no one else is going to see it. Yeah, I so I, I struggle a little bit with the with the question of what these companies are required or should host, right? On the one hand, they're private companies. And because they're private companies, they have the right to moderate as they see fit. Um, on the other hand, uh, their scale is so extreme that there's... Um, that it's just the place where everybody goes. You know, they have a monopoly on on um, either video sharing or you know, they, they've reached a monopoly status. And these companies um, have so much uh, control over information at this point. We have to sit back and say, well, well, are they really just private companies who are stewards of our information and get to do moderate at this level? Or... Is this something where we either need to break them up, um, or we need to set it, create some new rules that create neutrality on these platforms because of their scale? Um, and at a minimum, if they are going to have this this level of this sort of scale, um, should we have protections in place that allow for competition to actually exist? So right now, for instance, it's not easy to leave Twitter. Why? Because you lose your contacts, you lose. Um, your conversations. Same with Facebook. I mean, all of these platforms, it's very difficult um, to leave because they they control all of the content that you've created or and your relationships. So one step, I think, would be um, data portability. You know, basically make it very easy to leave one of these companies if you don't like their behavior, um, if you don't like what you know how they're how they're um, restricting um, certain types of speech things like that but right now um, individuals don't really have any kind of meaningful choice you know it's very difficult like if you want to just leave YouTube at this point um, that's that that doesn't make it's not necessarily all that easy and something like Google you know YouTube itself you know maybe is just is just too big so I think we have to have the conversation of at a, at a certain scale point, are they really just a private company or are they or are they kind of operating as a shadow government in the sense that in the same way they were doing data extraction and that data extraction was valuable for the government and they were able to take things from us directly that a government would have never been able to take from us directly is the same thing now happening with speech where the government can use corporate entities as proxies um, to accomplish things that they could never do directly. Like the government can't come in and say, you can't say this, take this down, remove this. Um, this is false, this is true. That's not allowed, but a private company can. And since this is where conversations are happening and information is, is, um, is uh, you know, narratives are kind of driven um, and information is, is, is spread, um, how, much of, how much influence is the government having over those conversations at this point? Um, so in a way, big tech is a kind of proxy for the government when it comes to regulating speech. Wow. And, but right now, as the I'm just adjusting my settings yep. here. Um, right now, as the law is written, they're allowed to. You know, uh, Section 230. A lot of times, people say, "Oh, well, that just means they're supposed to treat all content neutrally." And actually, what Section 230 allows is for these companies to uh, moderate as they see fit. Um, and so I think the question then becomes, well, do we, and, and it is the law that kind of created the internet. I mean, it's not just about moderation. Um, it's also what allows you or me to go on a website and post comments 
and to write things anonymously. And that and you can do that and you can say what you want there and it doesn't make that company liable for doing that. So it protects the little guy almost more than it protects the big guy. So, uh, you know, it's in a way, Section 230 is sort of the free speech law of the internet. It's one of the few kind of rights, that, <laughs> few regulations that actually yeah, protected these, some rights online. These companies wouldn't be able to exist without that law, right? Because they would just be, they would be buried by lawsuits. Wasn't Trump trying to get rid of that and abolish that? Trump, Trump seemed to be upset that he couldn't say whatever he wanted. And I think he didn't quite, whoever was advising him on Section 230 didn't perhaps clarify exactly what that meant. So he's like, I'm going to take away this thing that allows the internet to, you know, if, if I can't have Facebook, no one can. If I can't have Twitter, no one can. Meanwhile, you know, Biden was coming from sort of the opposite perspective, saying we want the internet to be a safer and happier whatever place that has less misinformation. So we need to get rid of Section 230 so that we can have more control over, you know, to make these companies accountable um, for everything that gets posted on their sites. So they both wanted to get rid of Section 230, but for completely different reasons. <laughs> um, wow. And it's uh, like they both I, didn't know what the uh, Or to was. get rid of it and replace it with something else, yeah. right? Yeah, um, you know, and I, 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 uh, I, I think that that's, I think that's a mistake. I think what we need to be looking at is the scale of these companies, whether or not we should, uh, how we break them up, and restoring rights online, restoring, um, restoring uh, digital privacy rights that um, that I think have the lack of which I think have uh, have put us in this situation. <laughs>